So everyone is trying to get a cinematic look. Search YouTube and you will find hundreds of videos, people weighing in, if this is cinematic, that is cinematic. And everyone who picks up a camera wants to be a cinematographer, not a videographer. But the reality is that most people get this wrong. Most people are looking for techniques that famous cinematographers use, some certain magic secret source that you are going to be able to sprinkle on your videos and suddenly they'll be transformed into cinematic images. That's not how it works. Certain lighting or shallow depth of field does not make something cinematic. They're great tools to achieve this. Sometimes they aren't enough. The one and only thing that makes an image cinematic is that it helps to tell a story. By the placement of the elements in the frame, you are creating meaning to the viewer about the story. That is what cinema is at the bedrock and that is what you have to do with the camera to make things cinematic, to tell a story. Shallow focus is great because it shows the character in relation to their environment. It shows how focused they are and how isolated they are in what's around them. When you use shallow focus on an object, it shows that all of the character's attention is on this object, whether it's a bullet or a gun or another person. The opposite of shallow focus, deep focus, is great as well. If you look at Lawrence of Arabia, a film that is often cited as the most beautiful, most cinematic film in history, it's all shot at f11. The person in the foreground's in focus and the mountains 50 kilometers away are in focus. That's because the character, Lawrence of Arabia, is in the desert. He's part of the desert. The desert isn't background to him. It's not something he's blocking out. It's part of his character, he's absorbed and immersed in the desert. That's why the desert's in focus. The filmmakers are telling us that this man is becoming part of his environment. That's why they're both sharp. Far side key lighting is great because it is a way of connecting the character to the background. The background is lighting the character, connecting them. It's affecting the character. The character is in the environment when they're lit from a far side key. Having a shadow side and a key side to the character is a way of giving them shape, showing duality, showing context. Near side key lighting is also great when you light the character from behind camera. When it lights their eyes brightly, it shows every pore and every hair. You show that they're fully awake and aware of the world that they're in. They're fully conscious. The famous orange teal color grading works really well when you're trying to show a human living, breathing character in a cold, unfeeling, inhuman environment. If you're just dropping on a LUT to make it look cool, it says nothing at all. It's not cinematic because you're not telling a story. You're just creating light and color. Crazy, blown out, Bob Richardson style halo lighting works really well when you're showing a character has an epiphany or showing that they're special or connected to some higher power. But if you do it on every single character in the film, it loses its meaning. It loses its ability to tell a story for the audience. Big, soft overhead sources are great when you're trying to communicate dreaminess and softness of the character. Maybe something about their youth or their innocence or the dream likeness of their existence. And deep, blown out silhouettes are great when you're trying to communicate something ominous or something dark about the character. Look at this shot from Clockwork Orange. We have just one light blown out. Doesn't really make that much sense, but the four silhouettes of the characters are projected over uh, their intended victim and you have this wonderful feeling about their murderous intent. You can't even see their faces. They're just uh, instruments of evil at this point. One of my favorites and one of the greatest battle scenes of all time is the final fight in the reign of Seven Samurai. This could be one of the first big battles in the rain. It's not just there to have motion and to have cool reflections. It's there not just because of the three hours building of this battle, and all the tension and questions and uh, lead up that's finally being released and pouring down on the characters. It's also about the history of Japan. The samurai class have been asserting privileges for a thousand years as the protectors of the peasants. And now when the peasants are in danger, these seven samurai or 
six samurai and a peasant pretending to be a samurai are going to finally have to pay the bill and stand up for what's right. It's this amazing outpouring of built up emotions. But the thousands of films that copied it just copied the surface. They just copied the, the water and the rain. It became a cliche. They didn't copy, they didn't copy how the Kurosawa used rain as a symbol and as a meaning to make the battle more than just a battle. The point I'm trying to get across here is that cinematography is all about telling stories through images, not just creating images that look cool or creating beauty for the sake of beauty. When you see a scene or an image that affects you, look past the surface, look past where the lights are or what the color palette is and look to why the filmmakers chose that color palette or that lighting style. Look at how they use the techniques to create relationships between the foreground, the subject, the background. Look at the symbolism, look at the color theory. That is what is gonna make your work cinematic. That is what is gonna make your work meaningful. If you're interested in more content like this, I have a website called Canon Masterclass where I have over 20 longer form tutorials about the theory and techniques of filmmaking. There's a ton of camera specific tutorials for the Canon cinema system, as well as cinematography and filmmaking generally. I hope that someone up there found this valuable because it's valuable for me as well. I, just like everyone else, get into this habit of looking at something I like and trying to deconstruct uh, how the filmmakers did it. And not often enough do I ask why the filmmakers did it. And if you're thinking, I'm just the cinematographer, I don't get to choose where we shoot, who's in the frame, what the meaning of the film is, then you're missing out on the largest part of the cinematographer's job. You're not there just to work the camera or make pretty pictures. You're there as a collaborator with the director and the other storytellers to create a story that means something to the audience. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time.